Hey guys, it's Michael Levine. Today I wanted to talk blow dryers again. Now, uh, if you watched my other video on blow dryers, I was kind of, I was just reviewing random, not random blow dryers, but the blow dryers that happened to be in my kit. But now I have something that's a little bit kind of interesting to me. Um, that is that I have a bioionic 10 times here. Um, interestingly enough, I was, uh, I was out of town. I don't know where I was, but I was out of town and I got a message saying there was a gift for me. And I arrived to my salon and I had 10 of these. Um, no charge, which is pretty cool. So thanks guys at BioIonic. Uh, I still have no idea why you sent me these things. Um, but, uh, but I'm in, in enjoying checking it out. And, um, so I've opened one up and I used it a few times and, um, my wife is now currently using this dryer because I personally am using a Dyson and I thought it might be an interesting, um, review for me to talk about the 10 times versus the Dyson because I use both of the, both of these and I have a pretty good um, pretty good educated experience with both of them as a hairdresser so I wanted to talk about some pros and cons and the things that I like and dislike about both of these dryers so uh, I've already talked about the Dyson in a previous video so I'm gonna get back to the Dyson stuff so first I'm just gonna talk some nitty-gritty some specs uh, both of these dryers are I believe the two most expensive blow dryers on the market. I, I believe the Dyson is around 400, and the um, the Bioionic. This is U.S. dollars. The Bioionic comes in at around 330 dollars. Yeah. So the Dyson, yeah, 400 dollars U.S. The the Bioionic is 330 dollars. So these are two extremely expensive blow dryers. Um, and probably both of them are probably more expensive than they should be. Uh, as far as further specs go, the Dyson weighs about 1.8 pounds and the Bioionic is less than a pound. So the Dyson is actually almost twice the weight, but you don't feel that in your hand at all. And that's because of the motor in the Dyson sitting in the handle. What you actually feel on top of your hand is they feel very similar in weight which which makes the Dyson if you look from a purely spec standpoint it's nearly twice the weight but if you feel the two of them they're very very similar um, definitely the bioionic is a little bit lighter in feel um, but in reality it's in half the weight both of them have a nine foot cord uh, the Dyson is a 1600 watt dryer and the bioionic is an 1800 watt dryer so conceivably would um, generate a little bit more power and heat. Um, so the Bioionic is, an, I'm gonna, I'll talk about the Dyson in just a few minutes. The Bioionic is a really interesting product to me. Um, firstly, I'm trying to find a good angle for it. What I really like about it is it's got a kind of old school feel. It reminds me of my mom or my dad's, actually I never knew whose it was, my mom's or my dad's, but they had an old school yellow blow dryer with the vent on the side, which was really, really cool. And then, you know, current blow dryers, they all have the vent on the back and then that's where the filter is. But these have the vent on the side. And what's really interesting to me is it actually has two vents, one on either side. And the vent is kind of, kind of sexy. It's got, you can sort of see this pattern of the vent. It's really neat. It's um, you know, purely, I'm sure this is nothing to do with efficiency. This is just kind of sexy. Um, I'm going to take both of the vents off. They just snap off. They're in there really, really securely. I got to tell you, this dryer feels really, really good. It feels like a very high quality product. And I believe with the vent on either side, you're basically doubling your air intake, making a super, super efficient product in that it's able to draw air from both sides as opposed to just from an equal side at the back. I don't know from an engineering standpoint if um, venting air from the side is any better. I also, I don't know if, I, don't, I, I mean, definitely the fan, the intake is on this side. I mean, if you guys don't understand what a blow dryer does, essentially, the what a blow dryer does is it draws cold air in from the outside right? That's your cold air. And then through the barrel is a heating element, uh, which will be some coils. It'll basically be like a toaster. And the cold air rushes over that super hot toaster. Um, and then that heats the air that blows out. That's the essentially what a, a blow dryer is. And this is also why when your fan starts to go, or if your air intake becomes clogged, you're going to burn out your blow dryer really, really quick because those heating coils need that cold air to rush over them to cool them down or else they get too hot. 
and the hotter they get, well, the blow dryer is not built for them to, to withstand uh, a certain amount of heat. So always clean your filters. I see hairdressers that never clean their filters and, and you look at it and it's just like completely, it looks like your dryer lint, you know, when you peel the thing off the dryer. So you can take your filters out and just give them a rinse and a, and a quick scrub and that'll make your blow dryer last way, way longer. You know, when blow dryers burn out, I'm going to go off a little bit on a tangent here. This is more for consumers, but even blow dryers, or blow dryers, hairdressers do this all the time. Two things usually happen in order for a blow dryer to die. It's very rare that a well-kept blow dryer actually dies. I mean, they kind of, they can last you 10 years, no problem. But two things happen. One, the hairdresser winds it like this and puts tension on this part of the cord. This is where, in here, is where the solder connection or the screw connection goes from the cord to the internals of the blow dryer. And when this gets a whole bunch of tension, which can happen by winding it really tightly like this, and this happens with all of your hair appliances. You know, I see this when people take their flat iron and they take it really tight and they do this really beautiful, like, noose around it. It's like, well, that's all well and good, but you're totally destroying your your um your heating implement so don't do that with your wire with your cord you can do anything here but this has to be loose same with the plug end of it don't pull on the plug end of it but you can pull on the cord as much as you want so anyways if you're going to wind leave this really really loose and then just wind it this way and that and you can do anything you want and wind it back and forth whatever you want to do this is not putting any tension on the product whatsoever because this is where the slack is okay so all of your, your tools, treat them like that. And there's no real reason to wind them super, super tight. Very often they will come not, um, yeah, very often they'll come with a bit of Velcro that allows you to just create a loop off the product, you know? So just create a loop off the product so there's no tension around the product. There's no need to, to wind it around so tight. Anyways, so that's one way that, that you'll shorten the lifespan of your dryer. And the other way is by not cleaning your vents. And then that with situation that I just talked about where you've clogged your air intake and now this thing where the heating coils in is getting crazy, super, super hot and it's not getting enough cold air passing over it to cool it down because that's really what's happening. I don't know, every time I make a video, it's like my hair just sucks. Um, i got to fix that up a little bit. Anyways, that's really what's going on. So keep your air um, intakes cleaned. And I believe this also has a removable, I don't know if I wanna take this out, but yeah, it looks like, cause, cause these are way too, these grates are way too wide open to actually stop anything. So it's in here. I'm not sure how these come out. I think you just kind of oof, get your fingernail under that and fish it out. I'm not sure can't really tell how these come out to to get cleaned but they are they definitely do come out oh here they go they slide they they oh that's not sure how that actually happens okay well there is a way of taking these out i could uh ooh, that hurts my nail maybe get a screwdriver under there i don't know it shouldn't be that difficult Maybe you just brush it off. Maybe it doesn't come out. Maybe you're just meant to kind of brush it off. But I actually like to take mine out and wash them when they have those little um, spongy bits in them. But anyways, this is the Bioionic. So I got this and I was really, really excited. I'd never seen one of these. I'd only heard of them. Um, so when I first got it, I'd been using my Dyson for a little while. And I also, I'm not sure if I have one in here. Um, my, my go-to blow dryer, and I hang blow dryers from the ceilings in one of my salon. My go-to blow dryer is a Parlux Ultralight. Uh, I don't remember which model number it is, but I love my little Parlux, and it's a shorter dryer. So when I pulled this thing out, I got to tell you guys, this thing's like a foot long from here to here. Now, if you take your nozzle off, it's a little bit shorter, and it seems it's a little sleeker, but I work with a concentrator nozzle, and you put this nozzle on, it's crazy how long this thing is. So for me, there was an adjustment because I was used to working with a shorter dryer, right? The um, the Parlux is kind of a stubby one that's got a bit of a, a nozzle. So the distance between my hand, like my brush hand and my dryer was quite far apart. And which for me, after being used to a shorter dryer, it creates a degree of instability because um, my hands, the closer your hands are together, the more stable you are, right? You keep your hands in tight and you're strong. And when your hands are out here, you're weaker. So my blow dryer, it was, I was kind of like, oh, it's getting a bit more of a shoulder burn. Now that's just an adjustment period. If I work with this dryer for a couple of days, I'm not 
not going to notice it at all. But I was definitely feeling a little lactic burn in my left shoulder. And I was feeling a little less stability with this product. The other thing that's a little bit harder, when you're blow drying towards you with a round brush, friends, um, you want your blow dryer aiming kind of towards you as well because that's stopping the hair from kind of getting frizzy. What happens is if you're coming down on the hair, the hair is on your brush, the hair is going to be kind of frizzing out both directions. So you angle your blow dryer on your brush as you're working it and that kind of smooths the hair as you're going. Well that's a little bit harder on a blow dryer with a much longer nozzle. Your hand has to be even further out. So you're really kind of exaggerating the movement you're holding the blow dryer very horizontal whereas with a shorter nozzle you don't have to work quite so hard to do that but again that's an adjustment and some hairdressers really like uh, a longer nozzle and for those of you guys who are these hairdressers you would love this product because it's got a wonderful grip the nozzle is actually very thin so it actually feels really really good the the thicker ones are a lot hard, harder to hold and because this is so lightweight this is a wonderful dryer to hold this way so if that's your style Absolutely, this is going to be a great dryer for you. And as I said, and if you hold it in your hand, it's still a great dryer. It's a fantastic product. I was absolutely amazed. I love the look of it. It's, it looks a little mean. It's matte black. Um, I love the blue on black. You can't probably tell the way I wrote there. Uh, yeah, you can sort of see that's blue. But the little 10 times is in um, blue. It's a very, very sexy product. Um, it's got a retro feel with the side vent, but a very futuristic feel. Um, I love a trigger cold shot but this is the type of cold shot that stays in and then stays cold and for me that's a major major pet peeve and again that's an adjustment thing but my thing is with a cold shot when you push it in and hold it it should be cold and as soon as you release it it should start to warm up again i sometimes forget that my cold shot's going and i'm going and i'll get you know, a couple minutes into a blow dryer, and it's like, damn, why is this hair not drying? And then I realize it's been on cold the whole time. So I find that very, very frustrating. Uh, so I wish they would, I wish no companies would do that because I don't think anybody really likes that. Just when it's being held down with tension, that's cold. When you release, should be warm. Um, I really, really like the controls on this. I'm going to see if you can see this. It's just a simple slide. Um, I've often felt that there's too many buttons and switches on a blow dryer. This is just a simple slide up and down and it goes from low, medium and high. Um, for me personally, life is too short for anything but high. Um, so I put all of my products on high unless I'm diffusing and I might bring it down a little bit. And that raises another question. This does not come with a diffuser. At this price point, this product should absolutely come with a diffuser. It comes with a very sexy carry bag, like you need a black, thick, satin carry bag. I wish I had it here to show you guys. It's in my car, actually, but it's like really shiny black, um, this carry bag. Why do you need it? I'll tell you why you actually need that carry bag. The reason is, because this is a matte finish, it mars really, really easily. Like, if I drag my fingernail on it, it's going to put a little kind of shine line into it. Um, this my wife takes better care of her stuff than I do but I noticed after using this just for the one day I was getting little marks on it. Um, it the finish is really good it's a really good quality finish but I believe that's probably why they give you the carry bag is to keep it looking pristine so your other tools don't get kind of rubbed up against it uh, what else can I tell you about this the handle feels really really good I like a matte finish it feels solid there's something that's an interesting thing that happens with this because it is so strong this is the airflow in this thing is amazing it's absolutely wonderful but because it's so strong and the nozzle so long and it's so light i found it kind of felt a little loose in my hand so i had to grip it really hard to control it which again this is all adjustmenty stuff but i did feel like i had a little more tension in my hand when i used this product because of the weight uh, the the length of it and the weight being so light I felt like it lacked a little bit of stability for my style of blow drying and again there's hairdressers that love this thing um, and I also as I said my wife is nuts about this she absolutely loves this product so I I think so much of these things are just an adjustment in what you're used to and as we know all we have to do is use a new tool 
for a couple of days and then we're used to it and then it becomes a part of a part of our arm it's like a new pair of scissors right i mean i switched to a swivel thumb scissor and i thought my god i'll never get used to this but after a day of using it i was like oh, i love it and then i never really looked back so it's the same thing with a with a hot tool you get used to it you use it you stick with it you work through the transition period and then all of a sudden it's like oh my god it's like part of my body again um what else can i tell you about this it's got an interesting nozzle here see so we're flat on this side but then on this side we're ribbed for her pleasure it's um i don't know what the engineering aspect of this but i see on behind the chair they actually sell a nozzle attachment like this and i believe what this does it allows you to really put the nozzle quite close to the hair with allowing just enough air to escape on this side i think that's what it does i don't know what the claim is but on behind the chair there's some hair dryer attachment nozzle thing that is kind of a lot like this that you can fit on most blow dryers and apparently they claim it speeds up your blow drying time and makes hair smoother so obviously the guys at bioionic know what they're doing i believe i first saw this on a t3 or it might have been a chi because the t3 knocked off the chi way back in the day but i believe it was t3 or chi that started making them like this way back uh, many many years ago um i'm a i'm a nerd for products so i always buy the, the 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 new thing so i bought a t3 when they first came out oddly enough i got to tell you guys when i bought my t3 years and years and years ago i think we're talking probably 10 or 11 12 years ago when they first came out when i plugged it in and used it in my apartment it set off my fire alarm instantly and i don't know what that was i don't know whether that was the ions but it was the strangest thing i used it twice in my apartment the day i got it just plugged it in to check it out because it was a marvel of lightness and it set off my fire alarm both times super super weird never had problems with it in the salon never had problems with it in any other of the homes that i had maybe it was just the initial plastic smell burn it coming off of it i don't know what it was but i've never experienced that with any product before so anyways back to the bioionic i go on tangents guys um I really, really like this product. It's a fantastic product. Now, my experience in working with it, airflow, crazy strong, absolutely fabulously strong. Uh, it dried the hair insanely fast. Like I got to say, it's how I don't know how they can claim you can dry the hair in 10 minutes. I think that's what their claim is. Um, that makes no sense at all. I mean, I've got, you, you know, Persian clients with great big, you know, home colored hair that's frizzy and then they want it stretched out that's not it's not happening in 10 minutes um but i did blow dry hair really fast with this and whenever i get something in that makes claims that that makes what i consider to be ludicrous claims i always want them to be wrong because i i always i hate the idea of gimmicks like i really don't like the idea of ionic generating stuff i think I'm no scientist. I'm not technically a doctor. But the whole ion thing just to me just seems really stupid. Aluminum creates negative ions. So this thing claims that it has like lava rocks in the heating coils or something. And that's their ion generating. Other things have ceramic in it. And here's basically the way these things work, guys. They take the heating coils, like the internals of the toaster, and they basically, toaster is probably not the right thing. It's more like an oven or a toaster, somewhere between an oven and a toaster. They take those heating elements and then they paint them with ceramic. And then that becomes a certain, and then that when that heats up, it creates negative ions. Negative ions apparently, um, well, actually in science, negative ions are better for you than positive ions. Positive ions uh, apparently uh, cause cancer. It's like living under power lines. So that's why you want uh, a blow dryer that creates negative ions. It creates less of an electromagnetic field. I'm totally talking out of my ass right now. I don't know the science of it, but anyway when they talk about ion generating dryers drying hair from the inside out i just think bullshit i don't it, it defies any logic how about the fact that it's super windy and hot i think that's probably what's really really happening so i don't really buy into the negative ions being better for the hair but i from what i do understand negative ions are better for you as in when you're blow drying hair you're creating a massive electromagnetic field and it's kind of like living under power lines being a hairdresser a, a hair dryer traditional hair dryers create a crazy amount of electromagnetic field so from what i gather and again i'm not a doctor but from what i gather it's safer and better for you to be using a low electromagnetic field dryer that creates negative ions because positive ions are really bad for you
apparently. So, you know, and, and then picture the fact that we're aiming all those positive ions at your head because your blow dryer is up here. So it can't be good. It can't, it can't possibly be good. So anyways, this thing claims to have lava inside on their heating coils and the lava rock is like some revolutionary thing that helps dry the hair from the inside out. I truly believe all of that is bullshit and I attribute the speed of a blow dryer's ability to dry just like a flat iron See, when they talk about flat irons, it's they say, oh, negative ions, it's good for the hair. Bullshit, it's 450 degrees. It doesn't matter what that product is. If you have it on something super shiny and super hot, it will smooth the hair really quickly and make it look shiny. That's just the way the science of it goes. I don't believe that the tourmaline paint or the ceramic paint makes any difference whatsoever. Um, and apparently, from what I understand, aluminum generates negative ions every bit as good as anything else. So we get into a little bit of the gimmick factor when we talk about the lava rock, possibly. But maybe, who knows, maybe it can be scientifically proven. But I do believe a lot of these companies are just really trying to create a point of difference. But here's the real point of difference that's tangible. Two side vents are doubling the air intake. We probably have a really hot heating coil. So we have incredible airflow and really, really good heat. And then they put this fancy little nozzle that um, has these little openings, these ribs, <laughs> and I believe that there's some engineering with that. And this creates a very, very fast blow dry, uh, extremely fast. Now, I had to struggle a little more to make the hair smoother, I gotta tell you guys. So I'm a natural bristle round brush kind of guy. Natural bristle round brushes um, help your blow dryer become a little smoother. I had a lot of speed in my blow dryer, but I had to really kind of stretch it out um, because I found that it got a little frizzier. The hair was a little bit coarser with this blow dryer uh, from the my style of blow drying. So that's it really for the Bioionic. I think it's an amazing product. It's an incredible product. Great airflow, good heat, looks sexy, um, you know, good standards. I haven't opened one up yet to see how this thing is built on the inside because I'm opening up all my Parluxes to hang them from the ceiling. I haven't opened one of these guys up to see what it looks like on the inside and maybe I will, but I don't think that's gonna interest you guys. So that is the Bioionic 10 time. And thank you so much to the guys at Bioionic for sending me some of these. Um, it's a really, really interesting product. And I think that, uh, I think this side vent thing, I think more and more companies should consider that because I think uh, it definitely did some wonderful things for the airflow of this product. Pri from a price point standpoint, I don't know what production costs look like, but honestly, I can't imagine, um, same thing with the Dyson. I just, there's, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't warrant that price point. I love my Parlux at half the price or, you know, a third of the price. It's a great product. Um, and I think if I was a consumer, I would probably be, I would probably consider one of these as a consumer because using it once a day, speeding up your blow dry time, uh, I think there's a lot of value to that. And uh, so I think as a consumer product, I don't know if it's as, as a professional, if there's a whole lot of, if there's a whole lot of advantage for paying, you know, two and a half times the price. But I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad about it because that's that's more of a personal preference kind of thing in how you see how you see your day going. Um, for me, part of the deal breaker for me as a hairdresser is this cold shot thing. That one thing alone would be a deal breaker for me. That's my feeling. But I also, you know what? The flip side of that is there's a deal breaker with this Dyson too that I wish on the next generation they'd fix. And I'll talk about it right now. So that is the 10 time. Now here's the Dyson, which I have been using. Um, Dyson at almost twice the weight, but the Dyson has its motor in here down on the bottom. So what that does, when you feel it, it feels exactly the same with the weight. Uh, because all the weight's from below, not on the top. So it's not feeling like it's heavy on the top. So the Dyson, and I've, again, I've talked about the Dyson, and there's enough Dyson reviews. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. Um, the things that I like about the Dyson, because it's so short, like look how short this thing is without a nozzle, guys. It's barely longer than my hand. This thing has got to be the shortest blow dryer on the market unless it's one of those portable blow dryers. This basically has the, the shortness of a portable um, travel blow dryer, but with the strength that's a power that's very, very similar to the other one. Um, I love this, and the reason is it doesn't rotate in my hand whatsoever. It feels so stable in my hand because the nozzle is so short. It also allows me to be a little more compressed when I'm doing my blowouts, which is, I feel a little bit is better on my shoulders. I feel a little stronger. When I use this product, 
I felt really, really natural with it right away. And that's probably because I had been using a shorter one. Um, the other thing is, and I never mentioned this, guys. Did I mention that this doesn't come? Yeah, I did mention it. It doesn't come with a diffuser. What the hell? I would be afraid to put a universal diffuser on this. The reason is this. One, it's going to scratch the shit out of this beautiful big nozzle. It's going to totally take the logo off of this when you use a spring-loaded or a rubber band-loaded universal diffuser. And... If you guys have been around for a little while, you know that Ionic um, and lightweight, I think it's the AC motors that are really, really lightweight. So I'm assuming this is an AC motor. The AC motor dryers, when you put a, a non-branded diffuser on them, very often they'll melt your diffuser and sometimes even melt the nozzle of your blow dryer. It'll warp it because the diffuser is not built to distribute the heat the way the dryer is delivering the heat. And so you used to have to have a branded diffuser. At this price point, I, if they make a branded diffuser and they don't include it at this price point, there's something seriously wrong with those guys. So I don't know what the deal is with that. So sorry, back to the Dyson. Uh, everything's magnetic. I love that. The product itself is sexy as hell. Um, that comes with a diffuser, which is tiny, but it, you know, it's still, it delivers a crazy amount of heat. The product itself is really, really unique. The airflow does not come from here in any way. The airflow comes here through the handle and then comes out through these tiny little slots around this. Nothing happens here at all. Um, now, I don't know anything about the longevity of this. The, 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 uh, the Bioionic has a crazy motor warranty, which is fantastic. And a consumer should get 10 to 15 years out of the Bioionic if they take care of it and don't beat the crap out of the cord. So there's a lot of value there. And also that you've got the brand of Bioionic has been in the game for a really, really long time and understands blow dryers and understands wear and tear. Um, they also make all of the blow dryers that, um, what's the blow dry bar called? Dry bar. They make all of their blow dryers. These guys, Bioionic, Ionic knows hairdressing tools. So now with the Dyson, we don't know how long these things are going to last. Dyson absolutely understands airflow and their engineering on this product is amazing and it's a very, very sexy product. Um, one thing, you can't grip it from down here or else you're blocking the airflow. And there have been a couple of times, not that I would ever really hold it down there, but there's been a couple of times where I've gripped it a little low and was blocking some of the airflow. So you've got to grip it a little high. The thing that I hate most about this product is the cold shot is on the back. I need my cold shot as a trigger so I can do it each time because if I'm doing a blow dry like this, I then have to move my hand to hit a cold shot. I use a cold shot on every single section I use my cold shot. So what's that? what that's forcing me to do is remove my product while I hold my brush and stretch the hair out and that pisses me off. I do that sometimes anyways, but now I have no choice but to, to do that with this product. I made the adjustment, but that is something that is absolutely ludicrous to not put your cold shot in the trigger position. Also, if I was to do, if, the, if they're doing another generation of this, I would probably just do a couple of little silicone strips. It'll take away from the utilitarian de design of it slightly, but not much. Not enough that I think it's, that it's not worth it. So I would just do a couple of little no slip grip, kind of just little gray pads, and I would move the trigger to the front, and then you have a pretty damn near perfect product with this, with this dryer. Again, I don't know if it's worth the price, both of these dryers were given to me for free, so I can't really judge based on, on that. Um, I love them both, but this is my go-to every single time. And then there's the final one intangible thing that I talked about in my previous video about value with this product. Here's the thing that I'll tell you guys. When I hold this product, it is very, very... You can sort of see how it's getting scratched up there already a little bit. Um, when I hold this product, I do not feel like I'm doing something as special. I'm aware of what I'm using because it's so fast. So I am kind of aware of it, but I don't feel like I'm doing something, I'm using something special because of its traditional, somewhat traditional shape. Um, I, I believe the nozzle has to be this length. The nozzle thing, the just, it's, it's, a client isn't necessarily going to notice this when you're holding it as a, as a, a hairdresser. The client notices this. They see it and they notice it. It's a, it's, I don't want to say it's sexier because this is probably actually a sexier product, but there's just something when I'm using the Dyson, it becomes more of a conversation piece. I wish I could sell these in the salon. I wish I could retail these, but um, there's obviously no wholesale value 
for hairdressers to get these. And I really, really do like my Parlux, and I do believe that Parlux product is is the best value for the money. Um, the Parlux is not as hot and doesn't blow the air that this thing blows, but I, I feel like I'm losing a little bit of sexy factor with this that I do have with this. This just, I feel like I'm doing something special when I'm working with the Dyson. The clients are aware of what I'm using. Um, the clients look at it and say, hey, is that a Dyson? Or sometimes it's like, hey, I have one of those. Um, it's an intangible thing that creates a bit of value. So if I was to, as a hairdresser, buy either of these products, I would probably buy the Dyson. If I was a consumer and I was used to styling my hair, I would say it's a 50-50 toss-up. I mean, with a difference of $50 US, that's no small chunk of change, guys. That's over 10% increase in cost with this. And this doesn't necessarily have the, the, the warranty on the equipment the way that the um the bioionic does so I, th I think it's more of a it's more of a crapshoot on that that's more of a personal preference thing if you if you don't mind the longer nozzle i would probably get the bioionic if you need a diffuser in the package i would probably get this um i think they're both equally dried hair the airflow on both products was really really similar they're both they both move an incredible amount of hair and um, more so than any two dryers that I've ever used before. So beyond that, guys, I think I think that's kind of it. I think that's that's more of a, a hairdresser's kind of comprehensive review. Um, I don't know enough about the stats of these things, but I think that kind of, I don't know, I hope that gives you a little bit of guidance. If you're thinking, which overpriced dryer should I buy? Hit the like and subscribe button and have a wonderful day. Cut your hair to